Welcome to the Georgia Grown Test Kitchen. I'm Olivia, and today I will be showing you a very quintessentially autumn recipe. I've got a fall acorn squash and shiitake and oyster mushroom galette with a blue cornmeal crust. I'm going to be using lots of different Georgia Grown ingredients here today. I've got some mushrooms from Ella J Mushrooms in Ella J, Georgia. I've got um, some acorn squash, which you can find Georgia grown at this time of year. I've got some sliced Vidalia onions. I've got an assortment of local oils here. I've got pecan oil from Oliver Farms in Pitts, Georgia. I've got an infused sunflower oil from Oliver Farms in Pitts, Georgia as well. I've got an infused Tuscan herb oil from Alta Cucina in Atlanta, and we're going to drizzle this on top of our galette. And I've got some Sutton Mill Creek hickory syrup. Now, hickory syrup is really cool, and I really wanted to develop a recipe with it. It's a, it's almost like maple syrup. It's almost like the South's answer to maple syrup. It's sweet and smoky and has a lot of character and flavor to it. So I'm really looking forward to glazing the acorn squash with it. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is make our blue cornmeal galette dough. Galette dough is almost like a pie dough, but a little bit more forgiving. So we'll use a food processor for this dough. We're going to place all the dry ingredients in the food processor first. Love food processor pie dough, my favorite kind. So once you've added all the dry ingredients, pulse a few times just to pulse a few times just to incorporate them. So I'll just pulse it. Okay. Now that all the dry ingredients are in there, we're going to add our butter. You want to pulse a few times just until it resembles meal. So you don't want to pulse the butter too much or if it's in smaller crumbs then the butter has more of a chance to melt and then the dough will get sticky. Pulse about 15 to 20 times. As you can see, the butter is in larger chunks. You want to aim for larger rather than smaller. Because if it's too small, the butter has more of a chance to melt and then your dough will become sticky. Okay. So for the liquid element, we have some ice water here. It's just some ice that's been sitting in a cup of water to get cold enough. This is two tablespoons of buttermilk. So we'll add two tablespoons of water to the buttermilk. With the food processor running, pour all of the liquid in at once. All right, turn it off and pulse a few more times until it all comes together. And when you pinch it, it sticks together, but it's not super sticky. Let's do the pinch test. I think that's it's pretty stuck together. So we'll, that's pretty much ready. So we'll take that out and now we're going to want to knead this just a little bit so it can come together. And dump it all out at once. I've got this handy dough scraper so that helps me get everything out. I'll dip my hands in some flour because it's a little sticky. And we'll gather it together and try to squeeze it until it forms a ball. All right. 
So press it into a disc and we'll wrap it in plastic wrap and put it in the fridge for at least two hours. Now that it's wrapped, put it in the fridge for at least two hours. So our next step is to prepare our filling. I've got a small acorn squash here. So we'll start to cut into it. Cut the top off. We'll cut the bottom off as well. You want to get rid of this very hard stem, it makes it difficult to cut, in, cut through. And here we have the seeds. So we'll scoop out the seeds into a bowl. And if you don't want to discard the seeds, they do make really good roasted squash seeds. A lot like pumpkin seeds. I put them on salads. And if you have acorn squash left over that's been roasted, you can use that in a salad and put your seeds on top. It's a full squash meal. So we've got our seeded butternut squash here. We're going to cut each half into quarters. We'll start cutting it into thin slices. These are about a quarter inch. So with a squash this size, you only need half, which is about 12 ounces of cut squash. Place your cut squash into a bowl, and I'm going to drizzle this with a little bit of Oliver Farms pecan oil. It's gonna give a nice nutty taste to it. Pecan oil also doesn't break down at high heat, so it retains a lot of its flavor and character. I'm not going to measure here. Simply seasoning and roasting. Salt and pepper. So I'll toss this in the bowl. I'm going to evenly distribute it out onto a rimmed baking sheet. Cover this with foil. This doesn't need to be tightly covered. So what we're going to do is similar to steaming it with the lid cracked. This goes in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we're going to take the aluminum foil off and let it bake for 10 minutes more. And meanwhile, I'm going to start sauteing the mushrooms and caramelizing the onions. So here we have these beautiful mushrooms, like I said earlier from LOJ Mushrooms. We've got some oysters and we've got some shiitakes. I already have some cut up, so we are going to start sauteing them. All right, so I'm gonna heat this pan over medium high heat. I'm going to I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of pecan oil. Pecan oil goes great with mushrooms. It really complements kind of the meatiness of the mushrooms with the sweetness of the pecan oil. So I love using pecan oil with mushrooms. So now that our acorn squash has steamed a little bit, we'll remove the foil and put it back in for 10 more minutes. So we'll stir our mushrooms a little bit, see if they've gotten some color on them. And they have. They're looking really nice, so we'll add some salt and pepper. Season them 
them up. Then we'll let them brown a bit on the other side. And we don't have to get them completely cooked because they will continue to cook in the oven. So these mushrooms are looking done. So we'll take them off the heat. And I'll transfer them. I'll transfer them to a bowl to let them cool. Set the mushrooms aside. We'll prepare our hickory syrup glaze, which is simply two tablespoons of hickory syrup. And this is so that when the squash comes out of the oven, we can immediately put it into this bowl, toss it, and it'll be ready to go. So the next component of the filling is the caramelized onions. You might have your favorite way of caramelizing onions, but I want to show you a method that I use when I am super impatient and I don't want to wait for my caramelized onions. Um, usually caramelized onions will take upwards of an hour, which can be pretty time consuming for some people. So this method doesn't yield the same exact results as caramelized onions that have been slowly sizzling on the stove, but it does allow you to achieve similar results in a quarter of the amount of time. So, I'll use some pecan oil. This will be about a tablespoon. And this is going to be over high heat rather than low heat. So that's one thing to keep in mind that's different. And this has a lot to do with the browning process, also called the Maillard reaction for you food science nerds. Um, so basically what it does is it redistributes the browning and you'll see me demonstrate that when I start. So the onions are in. We'll toss to coat them with the oil. And we'll let them sit in one layer until they start to brown on the bottom. Okay, so our squash finish roasting. So this is going to go straight into the hickory syrup and it's going to soak up all of the smoky flavor. It's going to lend a very unique taste to the squash. It's almost like adding smoke without smoking it. I think is one of the favorite, my favorite flavors of fall is smoked food. So having the hickory syrup is great that way. All right, so the squash is ready to go in the galette. So we'll set it aside. So the onions are now developing a thin brown glaze on the bottom of the pan, and that's from the sugars caramelizing. So we're going to add some water. The water is going to redistribute that browning and help speed up the browning process. So if you've ever deglazed a pan, this is going to be a similar method. So the onions are starting to look a little brown. And you want to redistribute them in one layer. You can turn it down a little bit. If your stove is very hot like mine is. And let them sit until you have to deglaze it again. These look about ready to be deglazed again. You see you've got that nice brown sheen on the bottom. So we'll redistribute that.
and continue the process until your onions are about the color of maple syrup or about the color of caramelized onions, whichever analogy you prefer. So we've got caramelized onions. And as you can see, they've significantly decreased in volume. So it'll be easily spreadable to go over the bottom of your galette. You can also make these ahead of time, make a big batch and save the rest for French onion soup or onion jam or to go in omelets or on a pizza. Caramelized onions are good on everything. We'll set these aside and let them cool until we roll out the galette. So I pulled my dough out of the refrigerator and I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes while I work on the goat cheese and I make my egg wash. So I've got some fully softened goat cheese. You want it really soft so it can be extra spreadable across the galette dough. And I'm going to blend some of Alta Cucina's Tuscan aromatic olive oil. It's got extra virgin olive oil, rosemary, thyme, and garlic. So I think it'll be really good with this. So we'll just do a tablespoon. We'll pour that right in there. And then we'll start to blend the goat cheese with the oil. And this smells so good. The rosemary. It's awesome. Okay, so this looks nice and spreadable, so we'll sit that aside and let it keep softening. And now, We'll just crack the egg into our bowl, our egg wash. So we've just got one egg and a couple of tablespoons of water. You can use water or milk or whatever you have on hand. So our dough seems to be soft enough. So we'll make sure to put some flour down on top of the dough so our rolling pin doesn't stick. And we'll start to roll. It might be a little bit difficult at first, but it'll continue to soften as you roll it out. And feel free to put as much flour as you need on top of the dough to keep it from sticking. And what I like to do is flip it over frequently so that you know that it hasn't gone ahead and stuck to the bottom of your work surface. And see, I've got a little sticky place here, so I'll add some more flour. And I'm gonna continue to roll until it's about 13 inch circle and this dough is nice and cold if it gets too warm and it starts getting really really sticky you want to refrigerate it for about 10 minutes 15 minutes until it's cold until it gets cold again but it's still easy enough to handle so we'll flip it over again and keep rolling this way to get a nicer circular shape when you're rolling, you want to roll from the center outward. And if you want to redistribute this, that's pretty easy. All you're going to do is press it firmly together. And like I said earlier, galettes are very forgiving, so it isn't like you're wanting to roll it out to crimp it or anything. It's just going to be a rough, a rough tart. Okay, so that is about 13 by 13 inches, but I'm gonna check with my ruler. So now that we've got our galette dough rolled out, we're going to flip it over onto the other hand and gently put it onto our baking sheet. 
and I'll move this over here so y'all can see. So we've got our goat cheese mixture. We'll use an offset spatula or you can use a regular silicone spatula to spread a thin layer of goat cheese across the dough. And be gentle with this because if you're too if you spread if you spread too quickly then it could tear. We don't want that. It's never fun to have holes in the bottom of your tart or pie or galette. So I'm gonna make sure I leave some of the goat cheese in so I can dollop a little bit on top at the end. But that is totally optional. You can do that or you don't have to. So I've left about a two inch border on all sides and now I'm going to start So I've got my acorn squash glazed in the hickory syrup. I've got my sauteed mushrooms and I've got my perfectly caramelized onions. So we'll start with caramelized onions. We'll use the same offset spatula to spread them around in an even layer. Now we'll go in with the mushrooms. And then with the acorn squash. And if you try the acorn squash now, the skin might be a little tough, but it does begin to soften in the oven. So it all works out in the end. It might be tempting to get some of the syrup in there, but I would advise against that because it adds unnecessary moisture to the galette and could cause a soggy bottom. Nobody likes a sog soggy bottom. So now you're ready to fold your crust up over your galette. So it doesn't really matter how you fold it. Some people like to make little pleats, which is what I'm gonna do here. looks messy in the beginning don't worry because it will all look come out of the oven looking marvelous and there you go you've got your galette the last step we'll drizzle some of our infused herb oil over the top Last step is to brush on your egg wash. And this will create a really nice shiny coating. Okay, and this is ready to go in the oven. So bake this at 375 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. got our beautiful galette. So let's cut into it. So excited to taste this. You can still kind of see the blue cornmeal, which I love. And that is your autumn acorn squash, shiitake mushroom, and caramelized onion galette.